So in the last video, we turned this into this and kicked off the build of my mini home lab. I'm so stoked with how this has turned out, but we're not finished yet. It's something that I've always wanted to do, but I've just never thought to do it because it's so, so messy. Oh dear. This is the start of something really bad. So everyone knows I'm the LED man. I knew that would make you laugh. These apparently enable you to have the LEDs kind of like built into the ceiling. I see people installing stuff like this on Instagram all the time and they make it look really easy. And I don't think this is gonna be easy. We're gonna need to follow by a bit of... Let's see which one the laser's in. because I don't think that would have been possible without it. Maybe, but it would have been very difficult. Now it's time for the bit I'm dreading. <laughs> that is awful. <laughs> if this works, this is gonna look really good. I was honestly quite nervous about this. I mean, now I do have a massive line in my ceiling, so let's hope this looks good. That was awful. That was absolutely <laughs> like not a nice time that I've just had, but hopefully these are in a straight line. Wait, where's the other one? There it is. So the only damage I managed to sustain throughout this whole thing was this cut on my leg. Don't even know how it happened, but all I know is that we haven't gone through any wires and we have these channels now in the ceiling. So we can take these, put them in here, screw them up, plaster, paint, invisible LED strip. Right, whilst he's getting on with that, I'm gonna show you my rack. thinking, Alex, why are you building a completely new rack when you spent all that time building the rack in the last video? And to be honest, I'm so stoked with how that thing turned out. It turned out better than I could have ever imagined. The plan with this one, though, is to be specifically the AV rack. Let me explain. So, in the loft, now over here, this is where the previous rack used to be. If you remember, it was fastened up to these two pieces of wood. That has changed a little bit. But what hasn't changed is all of this AV equipment that still lives up here in the loft. I've got multiple audio zones here, a couple of smart hubs, and then over there, yeah, it's pretty bad. Now, don't get me wrong, the cinema that we built last year in the room below me is absolutely phenomenal. Like, love that thing. It has a really clean front end. But this down here, this is the back end. Oh my God. Yeah, that's not great. So this is the projector and this is the amplifier that controls it. Now, obviously the projector needs to stay here, but this control box here, this thing is going to be the brain of the new AV rack. It is an AV receiver that can connect to all of my speakers and then output to all of the TVs, taking in all of the inputs that are going to live in the AV rack. sick to be fair. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, the almost completed rack. It's not finished yet because we have a few more goodies to put inside of here. Now we are struggling for room but I'm really enjoying this layout because with the amp on the top, if I take this off, I've got ample space to get at any of the connections. Now let's wheel this thing through into the home lab but first let's see how he's getting on with them LEDs.
Okay, so guys, what are we thinking? Here we go. So let's have a look at these. They don't look great yet, but they are fairly smooth. So I'm hoping with a lick of paint and a bit of a touch up here, these should look really good. You're actually meant to install these channels before you've done your plastering. So this is a bit of an afterthought, but my main goal is to get rid of this light. Just because there's not much room in here and I keep banging my head on it. Everything though is covered in dust. out of the rack because I would not be able to get it in here. So if I go on my phone and turn on the home lab, there we go. Our LEDs are on and they look insane. They've really finished this room off. They make it feel really special. Now I know I'll get loads of questions as to how you actually make lights like this. It's all done through WLED. You basically order a cheap Chinese ESP off Amazon, flash WLED onto it, then order some LEDs, connect them to the ESP board, put the LEDs in the channel, connect it all together, and then you have WLED. And it's all controlled with your phone and you can do crazy, cool, weird effects with it if you ever want to. But usually this is just gonna be practical light for in here that isn't gonna hit you on the head. This is the start of something really bad. Was it worth it? I mean, yeah, these things look sick. What I've done is cut this little hole over here because we have quite a lot of cables that we need to get down here. So far I've run two audio cables, we've got to do eight more. Two HDMIs and there's four more of these. If you are ever running long HDMI cables, you can't just pick any cable. So the projector's here and we need an HDMI over there. It's about 20 meters to do it properly, so you need a fiber optic HDMI cable. Normal cables just can't carry 4K at that distance. So a fiber optic HDMI cable capable of 8K. I need to get that all the way round there. I wish running these cables was as easy as building a website on Squarespace. I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but it's one of the easiest ways you can make a website. My website, mmwifi.io, was built on Squarespace a long time ago, and it still looks sick. They've got loads of templates on there, so you basically just pick one and then upload all your own stuff to it. And you can even sell things on your Squarespace website. So this HDMI cable here is for the projector out there. This goes into here. So if you would like to save yourself 10% off your first Squarespace purchase or domain, use code MarsBar or go to squarespace.com forward slash MarsBarVlogs. And Squarespace, thanks for supporting my channel. Now, we are getting there. theory this should mean that if you wanted to play some games or enjoy some movies on the projector you can do and in the kitchen as well so anything within that rack can be displayed on any tv in the house which was the end goal and i have to admit guys i'm so glad we've managed to make something of this space because it is such a strange small space for those asking it's actually above a cellar whatever the previous owners of this house did it resulted in this oddly shaped room but we've taken the light out how much energy does all of this stuff use and that's what these things in the middle are for these are my solar batteries so these take in energy that i generate at the house from solar and both of these racks right now are running off of this battery, which again is another neat touch. None of this stuff is actually accessing the grid's power. Now the keen eye of you will have noticed this set of sockets here. Now there was a load of comments on part one saying, Alex, you've done the worst thing in the world, putting your network rack right next to some, well, hot and cold water pipes. Obviously it's not great, but I've not really had any other choice other than to get my friend Barton round to take that monstrosity that the electricians left before and put some metal conduit pipes with some actual sockets on the wall in here. I think we're happy with it, aren't we? It we're looks happy, good. We're happy with how it's turned out. And they've really finished it off nicely. The only thing I forgot is a tiny faceplate to cover this hole up the top. But all in all, 
I am so happy with this. It completely beats what we had before and to think all of this was sparked from a simple comment on a YouTube video. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed. If you've got any comments about what I've done in this video, let me know down there below and I'll try and get back to you and I'll put all the links to all the stuff that I've used in the description of this video. Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. No.